this week, the Speaker of Parliament, uh, Right Honorable Alban Sumana Kensford Bagwin, addressed the press on a number of issues, including the position that he takes, amongst others, that there is no constitutional crisis in this country, <clears throat> contrary to the position that the Chief Justice had taken. This is what the Speaker said this week. Take a look. There is no constitutional crisis in this country. I repeat, there is no constitutional crisis in this country. The Parliament of Ghana is alive and working. Let nobody mislead, misinform, or disinform you and the country. The democratic system we adopted and enacted as captured in the Constitution, 1992, and fleshed out in various laws, processes, procedures, and practices is what has been triggered and it is working. Let us allow it to work. Democracy is about the rule of law. Let the law work. The democratic system we adopted and enacted recognizes that in the course of operationalizing the system, disagreements will occur and challenges and problems will arise. The system has put in place mechanisms. Speaker there and explaining his position that there's really no constitutional crisis as we're faced with in this country. This is what the Chief Justice said almost two weeks ago. Take a look. This is a constitutional crisis. Uh, we are living in a country where the parliament is not sitting. What is going on? I, I'm not too sure that this suit is to enable parliament sit, is to declare Very well. I, I take it. That, that, that's really in yeah, your so if I would but with the issues at play right now, what, whose report would you believe or whose verdict would you align with the state of affairs now? Is this a constitutional crisis as we find ourselves? The Speaker doesn't think this is where we are based on what the Chief Justice has just espoused. Oh, uh, definitely I'll go with the Chief Justice on this. Though, you know, in recent times I've not been, very, I've not been happy about how mm -hmm. they dealt with the matter. But when it comes to the case of whether there is a crisis or not. I, oh, obviously there is one. How do we measure there's that? A constitutional crisis? Yeah, yes, there is. There is Why because is currently Parliament is not sitting. So since the 22nd of October, they've not, well, of course, they've sat twice. But when I say they're not sitting, I mean they are not conducting business. So they've sat twice but not been able to conduct business. So anytime I say they are not sitting, please understand me in that context. So that's a crisis because we lost that week starting 22nd October. You know, they don't sit on Mondays. They sit mm -hmm. uh, starting Tuesday, right. right? So that week they lost it. Then we lost last week and then have lost this week. So three sitting weeks have been lost. So that's a crisis. Well, let's open, if we Google a dictionary, I mean, if we Google to find out what's the meaning of a crisis, it says intense and difficult uh, period or, okay, or situation, crisis. So if you use that, if your parliament hasn't sat in three weeks, will you say it's not a crisis? Mm -hmm. Crisis meaning, let me see. Oh, well, in in it says a time of intense difficulty, difficulty or danger. danger. Mm -hmm. The current economic crisis. Eh? You see already we are being buffeted by the cost of living crisis. And now we have a constitutional crisis. So crisis uh, everywhere. One day, one crisis. Or one district, one crisis, right? Okay, but let's continue. There's sometimes it's good to have light moments. It helps the discussion. Mm -hmm. So obviously, there's a crisis. And the speaker saying there's, there's none. I, I said earlier in the week, in one of our interviews, it's like when, when the as chief justice or the Supreme Court said, this matter is a constitutional matter. It is not a political party matter. <laughs> and then I told you that there were lay people in the court who started turning that, ah, what's the chief justice saying? Meaning that they could see MPP versus NDC. Yet, when the Chief Justice, uh, that was on the matter of the recusal of Justice and S. Gaiwu, when Tadio Sori said Gaiwu should be uh, uh, recused 
or he should mm. recuse himself because he was an MPP parliamentary candidate and he's an MPP member, blah, blah. When the Chief Justice came back, their response was that this is a constitutional matter and not a political party one. And he said, no, that was just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. So quite clearly, there is a crisis. But what do we do? Except that I, will, I think that the crisis is largely over. Mm -hmm. It's largely mm -hmm. over based on what happened um, on the, well, that was Thursday, right? 7th November. The, why I say so is that on the 7th of no November, the reason there was really no sitting was because the MPP had no members. They didn't have enough members to be able to conduct business. And so they, had, they tried to avoid embarrassment. That's how come they didn't show up in the chambers. When you get a peer, could be put him on. I heard him, uh, uh, what do you call it, on another station, saying that he wasn't even aware that there was any caucus meeting. You see, when Apia Kubi went to Parliament on the 7th, he entered. Then he didn't find his people. Long story well, short. He came straight from his constituency uh -huh. to Parliament. Excellent. But he didn't. Okay. And continue. when he got in, uh -huh. the, his colleagues were not there. Excellent. So he was later told that they said they were doing a caucus meeting. How can you have a caucus meeting and not inform some of your, your members? So that's just a ruse. So what actually happened was that. Because they didn't get enough members, it was clear to them that if they went into the chamber, uh, on, uh, thank God, Honorable Kofi Adams is here, he will tell you. It means that they, with the uh, NDC having a greater majority, their business would have been what? Defeated. So when you see that, hey, defeat is staring you in the face, what do you do? You withdraw. That was what happened. So for me, the crisis is largely over. It's largely over. The reason it appears to be continuing is that the MPP cannot marshal their members. There are deep cracks within their, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the, their caucus. Because he can't, Afinio can't marshal his people. He can't call them. Because a lot of them are in consequences where they are about losing. In the December 7th election, you know that the wind of change is already blowing, right? So it's clear that a number of the MPC defeat in their consequences. So in this last minute uh, period, they would want to be there to try to see what they can salvage. So FNU has not been able to give them better reasons why they should leave their consequences and come. Because don't forget, if they protect these MPP MPs, if they succeed in winning their seats, at least they'll have bread and butter for the next four years. But if they abandon their consequences and come to do the business in parliament, that one is to further Ekufuado's family and friend business. So are you so saying that at the time on Thursday, the information you have is that the NPP MPs were not enough. Uh, absolutely. All, all, all 137 of them were not there. <laughs> they didn't even get 100. 100 is even too much. Some radio stations said 31. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So thank you, Honorable. Yeah, some radio stations said 31. I, I monitor because we have to come here. You have to make sure you follow different, different stations to see what happened. Even Kennedy Japan told them that, ah, Master, what are you complaining about? Do you have the numbers? Kennedy Japan told them, do you have the numbers? He granted an interview. So I'm telling you that this crisis is over. The reason it appears to be lingering on is that Apenyo Markin cannot get his horses. He cannot get his charges to come to parliament. And so the problem appears to continue. Because Speaker was there. And so, look, don't tell me about the NDC MPs going to sit on the majority side. Why shouldn't if, I? Good. Mm -hmm. If the uh, MPP MPs came in, what is it about a seat? In law and in accounting, and I'm sure other professions, you hear substance over form. Substance over form. Well, but there are, there so are, there let me just land on the sentence. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. let, yes, so let me land on it. So if your adversary comes to take your seat and you have the numbers to conduct the business, there's nothing wrong with sitting on the minority and then conducting the business. Because bottom line, when it comes to voting, you have enough numbers, you win. So it's not the seat. So that seat thing is just a convenient reason for them. But we've seen through it. Honorable Kofi Adams is here. He was there. Please, play the, but, let the cameras but, but, play. You see they had no numbers. The MPs, MPP MPs didn't turn up in their numbers. But if it was just about sitting anywhere, then there will be no reason to have labeling and also specific positions of MPs in Parliament. We know that those who sit at the right side of the Speaker are the majority. And from, the, from what you also know, on Thursday, 
the names of the majority M or, or the names of these NPP MPs were labeled on the seats on the right side, correct? Excellent. So, let me. so, so, what, 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 same why, answer why I'll give. That, why we, is that not an issue? We, same answer I'll give. They call it, or we call it, substance over form. If so, you have the numbers, remember. They have a number of bills. You know, in all this over borrowing, they still want to borrow. One of the items is $250 million from AFDBA, even assuming the name of the uh, lender is wrong. It's, a, it's an IDA loan. A I think IDA. it's on the, uh -huh. on, for the Financial Stability Fund. Very good. And other so, things. So what I'm um, saying is that there's, yeah. in, there's, there's a supposedly critical government business. So when you are faced with such a challenge and somebody is on your chair, that's not why you'll be thinking about You even say, look, I don't want to sit. I want to stand. I want to stand. So they could have stood on the side of the majority, not sit. So as a form of protest, we'll not sit down, but we'll just stand at this side. Mr. Speaker, let's go on. Pa, pa, pa. And then when it comes to the vote, they win. And then the business is carried on. So I'm telling you that the crisis is over. I see it as over. The reason it's lingering is that Apenio marking. Uh, cannot marshal the MPP MPs to come into parliament to conduct their business. Okay. And because they've annoyed <clears throat> Honorable Kofi Adam Senko, they cannot rely on them because a lot of the business, they would rely on MPP, uh, uh, NDC MPs to help them, right? Because they use consensus, consensus. But when now you've annoyed them to such an extent, they are not coming to do any consensus. So that's where the problem is. It's within their camp, not well, the speaker.